So Russia have uh, secured the victory in the overall tie, but of course at the group stage we play all five matches regardless. And as far as Russia are concerned, they will desperately want to win the last two, the women's singles and the women's doubles, because, as I was saying just a moment ago, there is a mathematical possibility they could still win this group. Women's singles, as you could see, it's Kasanya Polakopov and uh, Jamie Subandi. Polakopova. Let me get that right. Second time I'm asking. Pronunciation the first time was a little wayward. I do apologise about that. Kasanya Polakopov. pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> My tongue is twisted <laughs> in all sorts of directions oh, here. You're so <laughs> kind. <laughs> Polikarpova. Here's Jenny Subandi. 23 years of age. As indeed is uh, Polikarpova. Kelly Hall. Umpire for this women's singles. Well, last two matches in this Sudaman Cup campaign, and the United States of America have fielded Iris Wang in the women's singles. This 23-year-old, born in Leningrad, but now lives in St. Petersburg, against this young lady who was born in Long Beach, California. So the Russian, as you can see, 82 in the world ranking. She has been a little higher. She's been as high as 78. And as you can see, she's already played nine tournaments this year. Reaching the final of the Portuguese international, she lost out to another Russian player, Ella Deal, who now lives in Germany. I actually saw Ella Deal earlier this week. She was here for the BWF meetings now. Proud mother of a second daughter. Going into politics. <laughs> or whatever. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> we'll <know>. see. <laughs> we will see. Jamie Subandi. Well, she really burst onto the stage for her home nation when aged 13. She was the youngest member of the entire USA delegation for the 2003 Pan American Games. Thank and you, players. Get ready. Center Domenico. Now, Carol Iaril. Of Ireland is our service judge. I think I've gone completely mad with my pronunciations once again because that certainly doesn't look the pronunciation with the way it is spelt. I can tell you that she has given me coaching lessons <laughs> on exactly how to <laughs> pronounce her how name. How to do that one. <laughs> G's and F's were yeah. silent, I think she said in her <laughs> And it's Carol E R E. <laughs> anyway, she's a very experienced umpire. She is. And, of course, here working as the service judge for this particular match. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, USA, represented by Jamie Subandi. On my left, Russia, represented by Senya Polikopova. USA to serve, level, play. So, Kasanya Polikapova, on our side of the court, will be very anxious to try and keep Russia's run going. Now, what do you like at mathematics? Mm, pretty good, they say. Yeah. Now, obviously, <laughs> with <laughs> what's happened in the group so far, we know, of course, that Scotland have won both their matches so far against the two teams that we're watching now. Both of those victories were by the margin of 4-1. They're playing Sweden on the adjoining court. Now, what would 
obviously, if Scotland were to beat Sweden, and they're one all at the moment, then they top the group. But if Sweden was to beat Scotland, I keep talking about this mathematical. Yeah, it goes. Then they have equal wins. Yeah. And then it comes down to. Then it comes down to to a three-way split, which yeah. would be points and sets, wouldn't it? Points and sets, yes. No, it would be a two-way split. What am I talking about? Goodness gracious. Anyway, let's concentrate on the women's singles. We'll get all that worked out for you <laughs> we've later. We've got people to do that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, trying to create the deception, but in honesty, let it drop a little too late. But I've noticed so far already she's she's playing so many delayed shots. Um, here we have another one, very nice disguised. Um, so uh, Jamie is is a tricky player to play. You you have to settle into a rhythm. You have to know when she's doing her stuff, and it can take a little while for Ksenia to to really work it out. What about the fact, though, that Jamie Subandi has played in both previous matches but played mixed doubles? The first one with Philip Chu, that was against Sweden, and then against Scotland, played with Helen Harianta. Lost both her mixed doubles encounters, and suddenly here she is playing singles. Yeah, but I, I think she will be quite happy. Um, I don't know if it's her, her favourite to play singles, but looking from uh, what I see here, I possibly think the singles is, is her favourite. So I could, you know, foresee she's quite happy with it. And uh, she's, uh, she's a clever little player because she's uh, really possibly not the, the quickest on court uh, amongst the badminton players in the world, but she's really compensating very well with all these delayed shots. see how Ksenia is, is really taking all the, the disguised shots in, in her legs and she's really trying to stand on her, on her two feet. I've seen from her perspective obviously within the next three or four minutes she must settle into kind of a rhythm and understand uh, when uh, Jamie is doing uh, these shots where to go to and how to counter attack it. Lady Polikopova, a grade student, graduated in economics. Eight, six. Speaks very good English as well. That's nice. Because that's always been a bit of a problem communication with the Russian players. Yeah. Opposite to, let's say, Dutch players who are absolutely brilliant in mm. English. When you meet, I just spoke to Selena Peak today, and her English is just so good, it's unbelievable. Ten, oh, I'm sure many of our viewers would struggle to recognise a Danish accent with your speaking. I've you. cheated a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've lived in England and have, you've yeah. lived in South Africa, and you've lived here in Malaysia. And everywhere just spoken English I've been yeah. so lazy not picking up any Afrikaans or for that matter Bahasa so uh, it's all been in English now to the mid-game interval on a run of six straight points yeah, I think she's settling into a rhythm here and uh, starting to to pick up uh, some pace and, and go to the right uh, places uh, and I think chances are that the Russian girl will uh, 
eventually settle in and, and win quite comfortably. Put a man back. And that is John Wei Kai from, uh, from Malaysia, the former Malaysian player, international player, left hander. He used to play a, a very good uh, men's singles. Good. That's yeah. really good. Not going cross court, not opening up the court, so making sure you keep the initiative the way she's doing it here. That's hey. good play. happens on this one is going to work to the advantage of the Russian player I'm convinced because of her physical ability yeah and typical Russian badminton player great yeah, they're good fitness runners. Yeah, and they're good runners always been great determination in the rallies as well that cross court shot there There's a good fight back. Subandi. Yeah, despite all uh, <laughs> the good intentions from uh, Ksenia, I think she's r quite upset that she hasn't won uh, some of, I think it was three or four last rallies. She worked really hard in all of them, but uh, did not manage to, uh, to secure a point. And uh, I could see she was a bit upset, and there's another one out. Oh, it's quite good, so Norton. Where's it? Okay. Well, my instinct said the same as you. Oh, dear me. Yeah. Well, we all make mistakes. Oh, that's lovely. That's a good shot. We're going to see a lot of these cross-court uh, slice shots from, uh, from Jamie. She, she loves to play them. Especially from uh, around the around the heads on the backhand side, the cross one is coming a lot. Have a little look round to her coach, her teammates, perhaps. Looking for inspiration. Right. It's a good lift. 11. Very fast, flat. Putting uh, Jamie under pressure. Here we see it again. Cross court slice.
hesitation at the back of the court. And that's again that one and then that one. And and cross, cross again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to play this match. And we have another one there. And another one. Mm. 18, 11. Five straight points. <laughs> So eventually you pay dividends to work hard earlier. Yep. Cross. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well placed. We were talking about that shot a lot yesterday, weren't we, in the men's singles about yeah. opening up the court with a smash down one of the sides and then going for the body smash. Oh, you picked up a diz too. Yeah, mm. that was the hey, men singers with Tiger and Jan Jorgensen. That's right. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness, what excellent mix. Under understandable. Hey, she was very happy with that one. She hit a neck cord over a mm. neck cord. Yeah. Goodness me. What a way to bring up game point. <laughs> uh, I can translate that one for you. <laughs> yeah. I like Yet. Yet. No. <laughs> no. But I like I like I like the um, the tone in the voice and I, oh, she, she was really oh hating it. God. Yeah. <laughs> Converts this time though. Due to the error on the serve 13. from Jamie Subandi. And pull it up over. Takes the opening game for Russia. 21 13. Just 12 minutes of play. Suggesting there. She's not very expressive with her hands. No. Something about staying up the court, maybe reminding her that the drift is going to be with her and she's the shuttle will be flying faster going mm. towards that far side of the court. And I think she must have a great awareness of the front court because a lot of these slides, short, uh, cross court shots are coming. So maybe Claudia was telling her to move her base, stay her base mm. further forward because mm. the clears. Uh, uh, perhaps won't go so deep because oh. the, it's against the drift and uh, all these very deceptive angled shots that you've <laughs> been talking about and she's mm. got no chance of getting them. I think so and, and I don't think that uh, Jamie is having a, a strong tendency of playing uh, clears so, um, so let's see. Starting with one, perfect. <laughs> the curse of the commentator. <laughs> Just felt 
when she had the opportunity at the front yeah. of the court, she just held back slightly instead of full commitment. Yeah, she really didn't go into it completely. Mm, nice angle. I think I have to ease my words. That, um, I think Jamie's playing a, a very clever game at the moment. She's using the, the baseline a lot, lot more than what she did in the first set. And then, you know, taking uh, Kisania away from, from, from the base and, and the front of the court. And then she is suddenly playing her, her cross court shots and so on. And uh, that's a definite change in tactic. Oh, that's nice disguise. Short. Yeah. Chunk badly deflected. Oh, hitting the top of the tape on the attempted lift. up on it in the men's doubles, Morton, about the work ethic of the men's doubles players. I have mm. to say the entire Russian team in general, mm. their work eth ethic is very good yes. indeed. They work so hard. They Always done. I've never yeah. seen anyone from Russia just, uh, you know, I say, never mind, uh, I'll play tomorrow or next tournament or something like that. Mm. They always give their very best. clear it was far too flat I suspect yeah, it was. Well played, but wow, I would have crossed it. <laughs> that was complete open space. And that one there, that straight smash down the line. Oh, I would have gone cross back. I'm sitting here jumping in my seat. Obviously, Norton, you've worked as a professional coach. When you see something like this, you've worked out the tactics and you're watching a game, does it frustrate you as a coach or, or does it sort of make you glow inside that you've worked it out? I don't know, both. Sometimes you, you smile and think, oh, they should have done this. Um, they, he didn't or he, she didn't play my favorite shot at this time and all that kind of thing. But on the other hand, I think the, the most important part of a, a coach's role is, is to give everything to the player so eventually one day that they can play all by themselves and you don't have to be next to them. Mm, what a great philosophy. Teach them to think for themselves, be independent. A bit like raising a child, I suppose. Is Absolutely, that I, I could easily not coach at the match. You know, if we go for other tournaments, obviously this is very important and all that. But you know, if you go for other individual tournaments, let them go, let them experience, don't have anyone to coach them, make their own mistakes, possibly video it, take it back, let's discuss it. Mm. Fascinating. And you see, the I couldn't be a coach. Because you see, if it, I'm listening to you and you're working out the tactics and I'm seeing what's happening. And if it was my player and I'd worked it out, I'd feel such frustration. 
If it doesn't happen. If it doesn't happen. Yeah. I'm the wrong character, I think, <laughs> to be a... You, you need to have patience. Yeah. Well, as I say, I usually have a lot of patience as long as I win. No. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true champion. That's oh, good that's play. Lovely. Yeah, nice. Well, it's, uh, it's amazes me a bit that um, Ksenia is. Um, she doesn't feel comfortable on the court. She doesn't feel comfortable moving, and she is, as you say, ranked what 82 in the world, something yep. like that. And uh, I'm, I'm quite surprised. I think she feels the pressure. Normally, she's not chosen to play these singles. And then, given the opportunity here, I think it's sort of uh, weighing on her shoulders. Yeah. That's not only the aunt, that's way. Yeah. Well, it means that the Russian, Polakapova. Has the advantage here in the second game. What happened to Prokopenko? She was a very good Russian women's singles player. Has she been injured? No, I don't think so. She's played here. I, I think uh, I, I noticed, uh, noticed she played uh, earlier matches, but maybe I'm wrong. And and not chosen to play this one and just resting her. Because th the reason I asked that, Morton, is because of your comments, she's not usually selected to play yeah. these sort of yeah. matches. And of course, Ella Deal was yeah. the one Russian player for years yeah. and yeah. years and years. Well, her, her name is Prokopenko or something like that. Prokopenko. Yeah, something like that. I can't yeah. remember. And, uh, she's a very good doubles player as well. But she's fast on the court, she's very quick, but I, I'm quite convinced she's played one or two of the earlier matches. I do not have the statistics in front mm. of me here. No, I'll check that out. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, it, that's clever. it. Well played. And well played again in this house. Bad luck, but it's really well played. That I enjoyed. That's good too. Oh, oh, that one's gone wrong. Well, she's done it on a few occasions, but played it very effectively. But this time it was going well. Same shot. Well, well. Mm, crucial next few rallies. Played by Ksenia okay. here. She's scraping a bit, but uh, playing good, proper shots, getting out of trouble. Um, I would say that Jamie is playing a lot of the, if you notice on the short backhand, she's playing this disguise shot into uh, uh, to the net, and uh, she's playing that shot every single time. And here we have this cross court slice okay. shot again. So, um, I think next time uh, Ksenia is playing uh, Jamie, I think she should note it down in her little book and say next time I play her, watch out for all these cross-court smash uh, smashes and court uh, shots and so on. Talia 
three, Manova. Oh, yeah, played the earlier singles oh, for Russia. One of the things in modern badminton I just do not understand is that uh, Jamie was standing absolutely next to the shuttle. She could have picked it up so easily, and uh, she didn't. No. And I, I just simply do not get it. No, nor do I. But it's, it's, n it's not only her, it's, it's everybody, everybody, every single player in the whole world. Yes. So um, I just don't get it. In, in the olden days, you just pick up the shuttles, play it over. It, it's not yours, and you take it if it, it was it was yours. Yeah. And you just play from there. And, uh, I suppose the the psychology of sport nowadays, with the sports psychologists involved, is perceived as a, an edge. You know, you say, in other words, you're without actually verbalizing it, you're saying to your opponent, you hit it in the net, I'm not going to go and pick it up, mm. you must pick it up. And yeah, I, and I know that's the way it works, but, uh, but still. It, it's bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> and at times it's, well, I think rude is probably a little strong. Mm. But <laughs> no, if everyone no. is doing it, it's probably not rude anymore, but yeah. uh, in, in the days when you and I played, it would have been. Yeah. And here we see nicely with how we just talked about it, and Ksenia yeah. is actually picking off the shuttle. Yeah. Mm. She's playing that shot well. Mm. Oh, I going to be an outright winner. A little credit to yeah, that's good play. Yeah, that's good play. Really neat. Oh! 18, 16. Oh, only three points away from forcing a third undeciding game. And she doesn't look happy. Sean all over her face. It's gone long. And she was lucky there. That uh, cross 19. drop shot was really slow. No bite to it at all. Still, really, really good lift considering. Yeah, a good fighting spirit too. Her defensive stance after she had played that very short lift. Oh, I didn't see it, but she really crouched down low and really hunting the shuttle. Very determined to get it back, and it's all level. At 19 all in this second game. Gone long. So the game points. Game point. Nice to Jamie Subandi. Oh. Yep. And she's converted. In one game apiece. And all 
credit to the American. Yeah, good game. She really got a lot of points on her slice shots uh, at the uh, second half of this set. Well, confirmation it is one game at least. 30 minutes of play, and we will be treated to a third and deciding game. And even games could become crucial. If Sweden beats Scotland in the encounter, deciding the group placings here in So UK. far, Scotland is uh, one set up and 9 8 in the second. And leading that tie against Sweden 2 1. 2 1, yes. So, Morton, I mean, obviously, we've talked about the physicality of the Russian. And like all Russian badminton players, extremely fit. Do you think that that's going to be a telling factor in this deciding game? Or do you think that the wonderful, delightful, disguise on some of the racket skills from Subandi will eventually come through and do enough damage. Hmm. I I've put you on the spot there, really, yes, haven't I? I shouldn't did. really have done that. No, that's really, really not kind. I actually think the physical seconds. side of the game is not coming into play. Okay. I think it will be about skills and, um, and obviously... Um, Ksenia is, is going to try to cut down a little bit on her mistakes and uh, keep hunting the shuffle as you say and, and get it back as much as possible. Not to make the opponent tired because I think it's too late, but simply to try to force errors. Over. One love. Oh, very good start. Two love. Yeah, she's playing uh, on the good side, on the good end, and obviously it fits her game well. And she Five. needs to get a very good start and, and a lead. At 11, Three, possibly 11, love. 5, 11, 6, that would be very comfortable for him. Oh. Uh, that's a good play. A change from the, the normal cross court from that position, straight down the line here. Good change of tactics. And a cup over was on her back foot. That's what I mean. Doesn't look comfortable. Look at this, look at this. Mm. But that's her Five, normal style of game, two. I think. So, but in, in my book, uh, very ambitious shots at uh, at this time in in the game. sort of stab underneath the shuttle. Another one goes wide. 
of the seven points that the Russian has scored, I think four of them have been gifted to her. Mm. That's way in. Good play. Really wrong footing the Russian here two or three times. Same medicine. That's what Jamie did to Ksenia in the, in the first set, I remember. It's gone wrong. Well, you said she needed a good start. And a good start. Well, she's got it, hasn't she? Yeah. It'll give her some you know, comfort going into the second half of the first set here um, because suddenly she can't you know punch the baseline as much as what she's been doing so far mm. oh, is very deceptive so Bandy. Yeah, it's, it's, it should be almost like driving a car you always uh, have a foot on the brake and and you know when you play a player playing the same shot so many times you have to have it at the back of your head it might come again so like having the foot on the brake and, and I don't think Ksenia is really having that mm. Well, she does have a lead, a four-point lead, as they change ends in this deciding game. Now, Morton, I was talking about Jamie Subandi's disguise and deception from the front of the court. Tell us technically how she's creating that. She seems to me as if she's got a very loose, relaxed grip. Very, very loose grip. Actually, opposite to Tukasini. She is having. She plays with what I would call finger power. She have a very loose grip and she can change the racket around in her hand depending on what kind of shot she wants to play. Where the other player is having a very, very fixed grip and is very limited on some occasions in that shot she can play. Mm, still too difficult to call this one. The players match for the taking. Eleven seven. Play. Is that? Yeah, she thought about leaving it, didn't she? Oh, oh found the line. Service over. And as a player, Eight, change ends and ending up the bad end, as it were. Mm. I always, always so desperately wanted to win that first rally. Yeah. But I think it's a good good choice to go down the line on that uh, smash to the backhand side. I think Ksenia has won quite a lot or put a lot of pressure from it. And here we have just a reverse. Yeah, <laughs> they're doing it to one another. The only thing you can do. Yeah, I can do better. <laughs> Shot. Yeah, very good. Yeah, a little look behind immediately after she played the shot and made the error. Perhaps in two minds as to whether she should have left it or not. Oh, my goodness. 
look like from here. But no dispute, so sure it was uh, in. Yeah, it certainly was. Plum on the line. Good call. Oh, that's pretty good as well. They're playing tight, the two girls yeah. at the moment. She who dares wins. So they say. Did she miss? <laughs> oh dear. That happens. Nine. That happens. She wanted to tap it, but oh, she's getting laid somehow. Ah, uh, no, 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 it's dropping. And the <laughs> yeah, but it's good character shown by the fact that she can smile and brush off that. Yeah, that's gone long. But the idea was good. Play down the line rather than cross court. And the same smash. Hey! Service over. 17 10. It's a beautiful demonstration of what you were talking about with that relaxed wrist and soft grip. time as well. Yeah. 13, 17. First the net shots and then uh, that one is coming there. She does play it very, very nicely, but your point that she plays it every time and therefore it should be covered. It should be covered. Inside the back line, it's gone wide, and that could prove very costly indeed. Yeah. Twenty match points. Match points have come for Russia. And Pova. Forward, forward, forward. Yes. Yeah. Follow up. Well, you can see the delight and the hard work, the grafting from Polikarpova in the end, getting the better of some delightful skills. Jamie 21 13 in the deciding game, as the umpire confirms. And the final winning shot anticipated well, built the rally well. 45 minutes, and in three games, Russia. 
21-13, 19-21, 21-13 in the deciding game.